Hey everyone, it's Hax. Today Smash I'm gonna tell you some dark secrets in, about the melee community Smash. because I think it's about time. Oh my god. I saw some some tweet from Leffen about something. About some law uh, getting some lawyer or something. I don't know what he was talking about, but is it is it in regards to this? Oh my god, two and a half Bro. Uh, <laughs> for people to hear them. Unlike most of my videos, today's video is not going to be addressed toward just the Melee community, but rather the esports community as a whole. That's because I value a safe future for everybody in esports, and I happen to know that the Melee community is currently engaging in a pattern of Please behavior that threatens not like only itself, but the rest of the esports world as well. Unfortunately, shit. I've watched my entire community be subjugated by this threat over the years, and it doesn't seem that anyone else sees what I see anymore. If they do, then they're either too paralyzed with fear to make an impact, or they lack the platform to do so. At first, I didn't want to give the esports world the red pill on what was going on within the Melee community. I saw that people were living happily in ignorance, and I didn't want to change that. But it seems that every year that goes by, the situation only gets worse. What drew the line for me was when I saw that the filmmaker Samox recently announced that he'd be releasing an edited version of the metagame documentary, which is set to air this weekend. I'm eventually going to explain why it should actually be illegal for this Sorry, uh, who is this guy by the way? I'm assuming he's like a pro player or something. Like, uh, how, how pro is this guy? I don't know a lot of Smash players. Uh, I know this one, this one, uh, I recognize these two. I don't know who this is. One is Hungrybox, I think. Is it this guy? Is it this guy? Pro, but D, D tier. Far right documentary home. to air, and why the Melee community needs to wake up to what's going on. For those who don't know me, let me introduce Are myself. Those mango in the center, really? Huh. I introduce I myself and explain here. why you should trust this video. I've been in the Melee community for 16 years, having been a top player for many of those years. Throughout my career, I've proved myself to not only be a top player, but also a top influencer for the community. Although I only have a moderate following, I've helped the Melee scene make technological progress in at least five major ways. The most notable thing I've done is create an ergonomic controller called the Box, which thousands of Melee players now use in order to avoid injuring their hands and wrists. But I've also done several other things. In 2017, I advocated for in-game software mods that gave quality of life improvements to GameCube controller users. These were adopted later that year. Then, in 2019, I explained why Melee needed an anti-stalling rule called the Ledge Grab Limit. This rule set change was approved shortly afterward as well. Later in 2019, I started hosting a weekly tournament series called Hax's Nightclub, which showed people that it was viable to play Melee on LCD monitors. Through the use of the latest technology, my tournament series gave people a glimpse at what Melee might look like in the future. And finally, starting in 2020, I began making educational videos that taught people about intricate Melee mechanics. All my videos went into great detail about mechanics that people had never heard of before, and were fact-checked several times for accuracy. I recommend checking out those videos if you haven't already, because today's video will be somewhat similar. Something to know about all the innovations I just described is that they all went against the grain. These were all radical ideas at first, but I helped show that they were the right direction for the community to go in. Today's video will go against the grain as well. However, today's video will have to I do can't with watch this whole thing, man. Even though I'm curious to what he said to about the the people. Is this, is this like a summary? Politics rather than technology. People may not realize this, but the Melee community's politics are in shambles right now. There's something unthinkably evil going on right in front of our eyes here within the Melee community, and I have the evidence to prove it. Today's video will be tough to stomach, but the longer people remain ignorant, the worse the situation will get, so we don't have a choice anymore. The most difficult part about this video will be accepting that the evil I'm referring to is being perpetrated by a community leader. There's a quote that goes, the greater the crime perpetrated by the leadership, the less likely the people will ever believe their leaders capable of perpetrating such an event. That is, unfortunately, a Hitler quote, but it's one that's very applicable to the current situation. There's a community leader who has caused this community to be filled with hatred, corruption, and greed, which are all things that the Smash community once didn't have. 
These things have become so normalized that the current generation of players doesn't even seem to realize what's going on, and that things weren't this way before. People are genuinely clueless that darkness has been cast over the entire Smash community, but hopefully this video will change that. Before I go any further, let me be clear about the magnitude of this video. This video is the final line of defense against someone who will continue to threaten the well-being of the Smash community, as well as surrounding esports communities if he isn't stopped. The situation will endlessly get worse to the point that it's become common. you people, let's look at this video. I think chat will like this manifest. Can I make a look? to a reign of terror within esports. I know this to be true based on three factors. The first one is psychology. I've studied psychology extensively in order to bring you this video, and I know exactly what type of cloth this person is cut from. I'll be explaining what constitutes a supremely evil person, as well as how to spot one. I'll also be going over proven strategies for manipulating people, especially large crowds of people that have been used on several occasions. While it is bad that I'll be showing you how to manipulate people, it's worse for you not to know how the Smash community has repeatedly been manipulated. Finally, I'll be explaining how people with these personality traits view their so-called fans and supporters, and even some of the people who think that they're their friends. The next factor is history. I've been studying history so that I can show you that what is happening within the Smash community is one-to-one -one with what happened in societies that collapsed. We're setting ourselves up for a dystopia in more ways than people know, and an entire culture shift is going to be necessary to fix things. Finally, I'll piece everything together with classified information that nobody else has access to. Most importantly, you need to know the truth about Evidence.zip, which is a collection of documents that was put together eight years ago. Evidence.zip is the red pill because it reveals an MO that hasn't changed, and has only evolved as time has gone on. The press has continuously lied to you about Evidence.zip, and so you'll need to drop everything you currently know about it. Evidence.zip will reveal that several events that have occurred in recent years were politically motivated in ways that the Smash community didn't realize, and that there was an agenda in motion the entire time. I'll also be backing everything up with my own personal experiences. I've been withholding a ton of information for this inevitable moment, and it's time to release all of it. Something I want to apologize- yeah, I still, I like- Hey Forson, will you play the Caves and Cliffs update? That comes out in Minecraft on June 8th. This time, you can also actually delete the wither and do the game properly in hardcore. It's only natural as a god gamer. Wait, what the... Oh, right. I remember we watched that. And it was like, oh, June next year, lol. And now it's June next year, lol. Uh, I mean, what was it? Caves and some fucking snow yeti or something? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm, all, I already, I'm a professional speedrunner now. What so. in advance for is the fact that I'm going to betray several people's trust in me in order to bring you the full truth today. Private back. information must be leaked in order to tell the full story, and so I'm sorry to everyone who that affects. One last thing I want to go over is why I believe this is a groundbreaking video. This video is a case study for how a community can be uprooted without even realizing it. It will show how platforms such as Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube can be weaponized in the modern day era of social media, and how laws should be implemented to ban certain strategies when it comes to these platforms. Similarly, this video will show how we as a society underestimate the impact of political and psychological crimes, and how we can't underestimate crimes that affect socioeconomics and people's mental health. It will also show how the esports universe provides the perfect platform for criminology. By constantly using the excuse Hatch that someone was is a, a heel, they become... player, but had to stop because of wrist issues. This guy. Awesome, I'll save you two hours since I've seen this. Hatch is saying Leffen is toxic and an evil figure of the community, but Hax is just molding because Leffen is just competitive and has wrists. <laughs> has wrists, that's always a good one for playing Smash. Uh, Alright. But I'm, I'm, I am curious, I, I don't want to watch this whole thing, but I am curious to what exactly he's accusing him of. Watch conclusion. Is this, is that equal to summary? All right, all right. Hey everyone, thanks for making it to the end of the video, or if you skipped here, that's totally fine too, since I'll be recapping a bunch of the information that I've given to you throughout this video, right. and I'll be explaining to you what all of it means. 
Unfortunately, once you know what all this means, it paints a pretty dark picture for the status quo of the Smash community. And it's really important that everybody weighs in on this because whether you're a top player or a TO, a community leader, or even a casual player, this is going to have an impact on your future within this community. And that's because there is a real argument for basically usurping the person currently running the show within this community based on heinous acts of deception and malicious intent. Just a long, long history of those two things. And now that a lot of that's been laid out clearly for you, I think um, that angle should make a lot of sense. So the first thing that I want to start by showing you is um, a slide of a dystopian society. These are widely regarded dystopian traits. And as you can see, just about everything on this list is currently being imposed on the Smash community. What you're witnessing in front of your very eyes right here in the Smash community is an attempt to basically seize the throne at the expense of every single other member of this community. Uh, the people are being dehumanized, they're being watched, they're being taught how to think, and these are all very totalitarian qualities that are reviled, just historically oh, reviled. You're not supposed to allow this to happen to your community, but the reality is there is a real attempt being made here to control people in this manner. So let's talk about why no matter where you are on the social ladder or what your role is within this community, you should be very concerned with the status quo. And I'll start from my perspective as a top player. So as a top player, your concern should be what I call the hit list. The reason I know about the hit list is because I was the first one who had the misfortune of being added to it. And that was all the way back in 2011 because I was a well-respected theory crafter on Smashboards and Leffen happened to take an issue with that. What he immediately signaled to me was that my good standing in this community was actually going to be put in jeopardy simply because I had lots of opinions about this game that went against his. He started to make very real attempts to undermine my credibility and uh, that has since evolved into eternal beef. Here we are 10 years later and he's still behaving maliciously toward me in an attempt to get me out of the community whenever he has the opportunity to. Now over time I watched the hit list expand. I saw other people join the hit list and they joined a hit list without knowing that they had joined one. People like Hungrybox and Zero probably didn't even realize that they were a part of a repeating trend. And when you look at who is getting added to this hit list, it actually becomes clear as day what's going on. Because like I said, it all started 10 years ago with an attempt to shut down a well-respected theory crafter who had rhetoric that posed a threat. But then it evolved to people who held the largest market share in the community. If you look at the top three people with the largest market share of all time in Smash, it's Zero, Leffen, and Hungrybox. And Leffen has looked to snake the other two out of their careers the moment that he had a window of opportunity to do so. So it's clear as day what's going on. Once you put it all together, what he is doing is he's actually looking to consolidate his power within this community by eliminating the, the, the people who pose a threat to his rhetoric or market share. He's actually looking to purge them, which is a completely totalitarian strategy. And what that does is it destabilizes it destabilizes your ability to create a career in this game because you have to realize that you're always being watched. You're always being watched, and if you ever theoretically start to pose a threat to rhetoric or market share, you may become subject to an, att an attempt to strike you down, to keep you weak. And something else worth noting is that every time these hits take place, there is massive collateral damage onto the community. For example, if Levin had gotten his way with me back in 2017, thousands of people would be physically unable to play the game right now because the box wouldn't be legal. Similarly, in 2021, when he overran Hax's nightclub, he displayed the intent to make people from the East Coast have to subscribe to him on Twitch rather than play in a free tournament series that had just been set up for them. And then also in 2021, around the same time, when he decided to intervene with the box's button layout, he was willing to teach hundreds of people how to L-cancel the wrong way just so he could grow the Leffen brand. He actually spread false information throughout the entire community just so he could be the sole beneficiary. And then I actually ended up having to apologize for that. I, I, I was the one who ended up in a bad situation, despite the fact that I was working the entire time to protect my customers. So none of these things make any sense. Everything that you, everything that I just described is uh, completely backwards. And it, ex it extends to the other, the other hits as well. When he conned Hungrybox, for example, he was willing to spread mass hatred throughout the entire community. He was willing to exploit another innocent player in order to enact his smear campaign. He made crowds become hostile and violent, something that has never happened before in this community. And Hungrybox's mother even signed on Twitter to tell you that something has clearly gone wrong here and no one would, no one was listening to her. Then during the Zero Con, I mean, don't get me wrong, Zero deserved to be canceled, but he didn't deserve to be put into a suicidal state, which undeniably Levin had a lot to do with. 
and then amazingly, all left and half. This is the reason they to stay as far right away the from the Smash community as possible. Holy shit, they are legend insane. Ten. I don't understand. I don't understand how the Smash community is still alive. Well, at the end of all that, to get away scot free. So he's getting away with murder. Right. It's been so long, so long. And where are the new players coming from? You know what I mean? Where are the new ones coming from? There's always a recycle of people leaving a community and people entering a community, right? As people get older uh, and get other priorities. Where are the new ones coming from? No one has a GameCube anymore. Time and time again. And no, it's I mean, having like, a massively a destructive effect play a, on the uh, upper a fucking Team Fortress on your PC, right? Right, but where are the new ones finding out about Smash Melee? We will go for your side and how do you like your egg? Smashed? We will try a game daily food video me how to go for some and i survival zero. Um, uh, boiled? The next thing I want to talk about is how it's having it's a destructive okay, so effect on the masses excited. as well, because totalitarianism is not just about consolidating your power over the upper echelon. It's also about controlling the masses effectively. And one of the earliest things I showed you in this video was when Esam raised the concern that Leffen seems to have established a culture where his word is to be treated as law. And that is very much so an accurate statement. But I want to explain how this was done, because there is a method to the madness. There are steps that have been followed by practically every totalitarian throughout history. And ultimately, those steps have to do with crowd psychology. They so, force the first way that you know Here's $10, and instead of adding a link to watch, please skip the current one. Whether you do or don't, minus 10 pepper. I mean, he's just saying that, like, what he's actually saying is just, like, competition on a fucking free market. That's what he's really talking about. He's not talking about some fucking dictatorship here. I, people do this all the time with other branches, other competitors. They're like, oh, that's uh, that's bad because of this, blah, 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 blah. Uh, people t shit talk competitors all the time to get more market share. It's not like dictatorship. That you're living in a totalitarian state. How about this wizard spends some time trying to get some pussy? Better life, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Classic. <laughs> For account in this community does not allow you to view his Twitter account unless you sign an agreement to agree with everything that he says. This is the strategy that I call pest control, which is where Leffen what? makes it clear that anyone who does not sign an agreement, steps have to do with crowd psychology. So the first way that you know that you're living in a totalitarian state is that the person with the highest follower account in this community does not allow you to view his Twitter account unless you sign an agreement to agree with everything that he says. This is the strategy that I call what is he talking about here? What, what, what is he talking about when he's saying this? Follow... You just follow... You just follow uh, uh, um, someone on Twitter? Doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything they say on Twitter. Called pest control, which is where Leffen makes it clear that anyone who does not conform to his beliefs is going to be blocked and basically left out of the party because when someone with a massively high follower account decides to block everybody who dissents from them, what it does is it divides their community into those who conform and those who don't. And this creates massive illegitimate pressure to conform, which can then be exposed. Oh, if you block someone on Twitter, he's saying that he, he blocks all the people disagreeing. Exploited because it creates the illusion of trustworthiness yeah. and correctness and in I just learned that today live. that girls' farts smell better than video games. Seriously. You know that new game package smell. Like when you just took off the wrapping. My god. It's a glorious smell. I've gotten off sniffing this smell so many times. Alright, I lost my train of thought. And I actually advise for this strategy to be forbidden when you consider how dangerous it can potentially be. 
So the first layer of crowd psychology that you're seeing is that Leffen's followers are basically selectively chosen, which is a massive advantage because normally just because someone follows you doesn't mean that they also agree with everything that you have to say. But in Leffen's case, a much higher percentage of his followers are going to automatically agree because they understand that they actually have to. Otherwise, they're not allowed to even follow. This is seven. I was wearing a red pair of Adidas pants with white stripes on them. These pants would become synonymous with my run at that tournament. A few months after Genesis 7, someone sent me a picture they took of Leffen streaming. Leffen was wearing a red Adidas shirt with white stripes on its sleeves while editing a digital controller's button layout. Again, this wasn't a coincidence. It was a psychopath's way of showing that he wants revenge. Needless to say, the behaviors you're going to find in this video are completely bizarre, but you might be wondering why I'm making this video now. I'm making this video now because the status quo of Melee is becoming increasingly dystopian, and I've been growing increasingly discontent with it. It seems that instead of opposing the Dark Triad, we've actually embraced it as part of our culture. When Leffen randomly attacks people from other gaming communities, for example, we watch and laugh. Then, our content creators turn it into the latest news. This leads to other communities telling us to take Leffen back to the shithole he came from. Even worse is the fact that we built a bot off of Leffen's AI and used it to broadcast his mindset to thousands of people. Once you realize why the people behind Deep Leffen Bot found Leffen's personality so fascinating, it's actually a lot more dystopian than it looks. I should have been here for another one. <laughs> uh, Alright, well, that's interesting. I mean, maybe that's how the... Uh, may maybe that's how they uh, keep the... the uh, Community alive. Two and a half hour video. Evidence.zip. Every four years. So anyway.